Well, hello folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Oh yes, the injunction has been granted. What a shame for the NCAA. I feel so bad for them. It's just awful what's happened to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a huge day. A huge day. Now the NCAA, they can do nothing. They can't touch NIL. They can't touch Nico. They can do nothing when it comes to NIL. Not in the state of Tennessee or the state of Virginia. Quit hitting yourself! Quit hitting yourself! Quit hitting yourself! The water tastes good, yes! Get away from us. <laughs> Woo! All right, let's get into all this good stuff. And I'm also going to show you the conclusion and decision uh, towards the tail end of this, but let me uh, show you the report on this. This is by Adam Sparks of the Knoxville News Sentinel, one of my favorite writers. It says, Judge grants injunction in Tennessee versus the NCAA and freezes NIL rules in our two states. Suspending the NCAA rules regarding name, image, and likeness benefits for athletes and indirectly easing the stress on UT amid the NCAA investigation. It's a victory for the attorneys general in Tennessee and Virginia in their lawsuit. The injunction was granted in the Eastern Tennessee District by Judge Clifton Corker, who found that NIL rules caused irreparable damage to athletes. In an apparent attempt to prohibit those recruiting inducements, the NCAA issued guidance classifying NIL collectives as boosters to prevent them from negotiating with student athletes. They didn't want them to talk about money. That way the student athletes couldn't figure out what they could get or what they couldn't get until they fully committed and then they could find out, which is absurd. It's ridiculous. So the judge obviously saw that for what it was, that that would cause all kinds of problems for them. They wouldn't even know where the best place is to go, much less the money. I mean, it really made it difficult. So the judge, he saw through that. It says the NCAA's prohibition likely violates federal antitrust laws and harms student athletes. Accordingly, plaintiffs are entitled to a preliminary injunction in joining enforcement of the NCAA NIL recruiting ban. There's Schmetti right there, the Attorney General for Tennessee. It's going to have a seismic impact on college sports as the NCAA rules banning NIL recruiting inducements are frozen for more than 523,000 athletes and ele almost 1,100 institutions. College recruits and transfers can now negotiate sign NIL contracts before enrolling at the university with no fear of breaking NCAA rules, or at least they can until the case concludes likely months from now. But considering the NCAA already was under scrutiny involving antitrust law, some NIL rules could be off the books permanently. They're not going to win the case. NCAA, there's no way. They've already been told they're not going to win. Supreme Court knocked them down nine to nothing with the NIL deal or originally. This is more of the ability to negotiate. This is going to get knocked out of the park too by this judge most likely, and if not, the Supreme Court. So either way, I don't know that it matters. Jonathan Scametti celebrated the initial win. He said the courts grant a preliminary injunction against the NCAA's illegal NIL recruiting ban ensures the rights of student athletes will be protected from, for the duration of this case, but the bigger fight continues. We will litigate this case to the fullest extent necessary to ensure the NCAA's monopoly cannot continue to harm student athletes. The NCAA is not above the law, and the law is on our side. That's exactly what the Supreme Court told them, the exact same thing. And one of the attorneys says, if UT is punished with bowl bans or players sitting out of games, that's irreparable harm, but the threat of irreparable harm is also harm. Cam Norris, a lawyer arguing on the state's behalf, told the judge during the preliminary injunction. Corker especially agreed that it's unfair for prospects to go through the recruiting process blindly without knowing their NIL earning potential. It says, without the give and take of a free market, student athletes simply have no knowledge of their true NIL value, Corker wrote. It is this suppression of negotiating leverage and the consequential lack of knowledge that harms student athletes. And of course, he originally said, considering the evidence currently before the court, plaintiffs are likely to succeed on the merits of their claim under the Sherman Act antitrust. And it talks about the NCAA is investigating allegations that UT broke NIL rules in multiple sports, including football. And the big thing was the plane ride, supposedly, from uh, Nico from California to Tennessee, because I guess he was supposed to hitchhike or something. Who knows? It was just stupid. It says, for the reasons provided herein, plaintiff's motion for for a preliminary injunction is granted. It is hereby ordered that effective immediately, 
The defendant, NCAA, its servants, agents, and employees are all and all persons in active concern or participation with the NCAA are restrained and enjoined from enforcing the NCAA interim NIL policy, the NCAA bylaws, or any other authority to the extent such authority prohibits student athletes from negotiating compensation for NIL with any third party entity, including but not limited to boosters or a collective of boosters until a full and final decision of the merits in the instant action. It is further ordered that effective immediately, the NCAA is restrained and joined from enforcing the rule of restitution as applied to the foregoing NIL activities until a full and final decision on the merits in this instant action, so ordered by Clifton Corker. Let's see, here's some uh, comments that Clay Travis said, the states of Tennessee and Virginia just pimp slapped the NCAA into oblivion. Court grants their TROs. Their TRO says any attempt to restrain NIL by the NCAA is impermissible, pending a likely finding of antitrust violations. The NCAA is dead. And you're seeing this all over Twitter, <laughs> NCAA cooked. And there's everybody waving their flag, having a big time. It's, it's a huge, it's huge. This is a monstrous decision. We're going to win anyway, but now they can't do anything. They can do nothing. We can't have uh, coaches out there negative recruiting against us, any of that crap, because it won't work. Now, I will say this. The NCAA, we gave them the opportunity. If you'll remember, myself, Skirmetti, and the Attorney General from Virginia did make an offer to them. We offered to simply do, if they would do this, we would withdraw our lawsuit. And they had the opportunity if they would have just done this. Before we let you leave, your commander must cross that field, present himself before this army, put his head between his legs, and kiss his own arse. It's too late now, though. I don't care if you do march across there and kiss your own arse. It's too late. It's too late for you, NCAA. We're going to crush you into dust. Then, when we're done and finished with you, we'll rebuild you into something that's useful to us as a as a university and other universities. We're going to rebuild it into something that's useful because you're going to work for us. We don't work for you, and we're not going to be scared of you anymore. Those days are over. You had your opportunity. You decided you needed to push us around a little bit more. Guess what? Bam! You just got smacked, buddy. I drink your milkshake. I Did you like that, NCAA? Did you enjoy it? <laughs> I warned you. I warned you. Should have listened. This is a great day for every university out there, not just Tennessee, not Virginia, every university. The bully just got bullied. You got to love it. Knocked his teeth out. <laughs> if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. It's right there. Hit that little button. Doesn't cost you a penny, and it helps me out. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy based on your viewing history. We won. Yo, Adrian. Adrian. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.